Hey, it's Dry Bear. It's time again for the monthly class popularity check-in for Western Lost Ark. I've run the numbers again, and today we're going to talk about where the classes are in their popularity rankings. So let's go. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. Let's get into popularity. This will be the popularity class ranking for June. And if you're looking for the last months, you'll find that in the description down below. But for ease, I've put on screen the relative change of each class from the previous month. Now, again, I have to do a disclaimer. There is no API for Western Lost Ark. We do not have access to actual popularity statistics. So I'm just doing the best that I can to estimate what the class popularity is for the game, which obviously isn't a perfect system, but gives you an idea of what's going on. And for the first few months of release, I was using the in-game character creation statistics for measuring how popular classes are. However, with the overabundance of bots in the game, there's a large number of sorceresses and berserkers being created, which throws off the popularity statistics. So last month with May's popularity, I switched to using auction house activity in tier three for the game. And I've tweaked how I calculate this just a little bit, trying to get a little more accurate each time. And I believe that this time is probably the best that we've gotten so far on how accurate it is for characters in tier three showing activity and what classes people are playing. And I gather this data through past experience as well as using the auction house to see what people are interacting with and how they're spending their money. So let's dive into the list. Now the top three classes have not changed for June. Sorceress, Deathblade, and Berserker are still in the top three and in the same order. Uh, you'll see that Destroyer has been added in, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we do now have 17 classes in the game instead of 16. Super cool. But you can see that Sorceress is far and away the most popular class in the game. And again, this is only including tier three characters that are playing the game, not just people that own a Sorceress or have a Sorceress in tier one or tier two. So I think this can be pretty easily corroborated by personal experience. I think in most group settings it is very common to run into at least one or two sorceresses so i you know this should be pretty self-evident based on experience it's gonna get a lot more even later on but i think the the standard deviation is pretty uh pretty far away from the other group so sorceress super high and i think this also supports why they smile gate and ags had pushed to put sorceress out sooner I'm sure they have similar stats like this for Sorceress in Korea, showing that people really like that DPS mage class, uh, and there just wasn't anything like it. So getting it out soon was cool. Deathblade sitting at number two. We saw Shadowhunter fall in the Assassin category last month, and it hasn't changed since, but it has fallen a good bit from what we saw at launch. And I'm curious to see what you guys think about this. I'm not sure why Shadowhunter has fallen down in the list since launch. Uh, I don't know if people just don't want to stick with it or it's not what they thought it was going to be or maybe the people that play Shadowhunter didn't end up, end up sticking with the game. I'm not sure, but Deathblade number two, very popular class, very fluid, very easy to play. I always tout that Deathblade is one of the best kits in the game. Everything flows well together. Um, the Surge build got nerfed. Uh, remaining energy has stayed the same, but Surge build got uh, relative nerfs. It was sizable, but it wasn't like a, a huge knockdown. I was I was looking to see if we were going to see a big drop in Deathblade or Berserker uh, after their nerfs in the last patch. I think we did see a statistical drop off in Berserker, not enough to make them lose the third spot on our popularity list. And I think this is pretty obvious as well. You're going to see Berserkers all over the place. It's a very popular class, but I think in the, the relative proportion of the game i think some of the berserker mains ended up re-rolling now they could have gone to destroyer or other classes but it does look like proportionality wise the berserker did take a small hit and you have to remember in a game like lost ark changes to classes are going to uh, slowly affect the popularity over time because it's not a game where you can just switch classes whenever you want you've invested significantly into that class you've put a lot of time and effort and resources into it 
So even when, uh, you can see this in Korea, even when a, a build gets updated, like buffed or super nerfed, it'll take a while, a couple weeks or a couple months for that to slowly shift its way over as people kind of change their gear, change their accessories, or build up a new class. Now, number four is Paladin, which is super interesting because last month we saw Glavier taking the fourth spot. I think Glavier was easily the most anticipated class in the West for Lost Ark, and it was immediately grabbed up by a lot of people. This is a very popular class and will probably always be a, a popular class in uh, Western Lost Ark. People love glaives, polearms, spears. I do too, so I don't blame them. But I think what's happening right now, it, we didn't really see it much with Argos, but with the release of Valton, where the difficulty has spiked up a, a, a decent bit, uh, there is now a much more clear need for supports in every single group. And there's actually, we still have a major support deficit in the West right now. It is very hard to get supports into your group. Oftentimes, groups are waiting long periods of time before they can get one or two supports in their group. And you'll actually see, uh, we're seeing this now, and we've seen it over the last uh, two weeks of Vaulton, where people are paying supports gold to join them in their Vaulton run because they're that needed and they're that underrepresented. So in this case, the popularity of Paladin and Bard jumping up, I think, is in response to that. Uh, and doesn't necessarily mean that people are taking Paladin and Bard as their main, but I think that the severe lack of support and the idea that supports are maybe even getting paid to be played uh, and there's high desire for them, I think is making people, if not main swap to support, then invest a lot more and play their support alt characters a lot more. So Paladin jumps up one, Glavier jumps down one, but the most shocking I think on this list is Bard shot up three places since the last month. So in the last 30 days, Bard has come up in popularity three ranking spots and i think that's just one i think paladin's a little bit more uh widely accessible more mass appealing bard some people just don't like playing her because of the sounds that she makes or the difficulty in kind of getting her moves right uh but i think again <laughs> the lack of support really really pushed a lot of people to make a bard to uh eye level push their bard and hone their bard or just straight up main swap to a bard now, you can see by this, we still have a problem, right? If, let's just do a, a quick measure. Every, if we expect every group uh, for, you know, difficult group raid content, every group of four is gonna need one support. That means that 25% of the game needs to be a paladin or a bard. If you're gonna have, you know, a, a healthy amount of groups being made with at least one support. Uh, if you add the Paladin and the Bard together and, and even just generously round up, that means we have 15% of the popularity of classes is Paladin or Bard, which is still not at that 25% mark. So there is still, even with the rise in popularity of Paladin and Bard, there's still a support shortage. And in speaking to players in Korea, it seems like this problem never goes away. Even with the introduction of artists, there's always a, a lack of representation for support classes. So I highly recommend anyone. It looks like it's already happening now where people are making support characters. Keep doing it, keep leveling them, keep pushing them up because we definitely need the support. Next is Shadow Hunter and Gun Lancer. No change since last month. Uh, I think Gun Lancer is, again, not gonna be mass appeal. It's not gonna be in the first spot. But the people that like Gun Lancer, they like that pseudo tank style. Gun Lancer is still a DPS class in Lost Ark, but it does have a cleanse, which not even a bard has without runes. Uh, and it also does have that kind of shielding, uh, you know, heavy armor move set. Uh, so I think having Gun Lancer on the list is awesome. And in some cases where groups are very desperate, they will run a Gun Lancer in place of a support just because the shields are super nice. And then Shadow Hunter kind of sitting in that seventh spot uh, hasn't moved much, but, you know, it, it was in the top four for a while, top four, top five. It kind of fell down as we pushed towards the summer and we saw Glavier come out. So maybe Shadowhunter players went to Glavier when that came out. Uh, but yeah, no movement there. The next one is Gunslinger. And this one surprises me. Gunslinger came out in the launch of Lost Ark in the West as one of the most popular classes in the game. People loved, uh, you know, the female aesthetic. They loved the guns. They loved the stance swapping. Uh, this was easily top six. It was very, very popular. And similar to the Shadowhunter, and even more so now, the Gunslinger has been slowly slipping down the list. 
Uh, and let me know what you guys think about this, why you think this is happening uh, in the comments down below. But it, I don't know, again, if it's Gunslinger players aren't sticking with the game or people are, you know, as they get further into the game, they get into harder content. They don't like the locked animations of the ranged rifle play style of Gunslinger uh, or there's just other classes they're interested in. But for whatever reason, Gunslinger has been kind of slowly and steadily slipping down the popularity list as we get further and further away from launch and now into June. After that is the Artillerist. And I think we see this jumping up two spots in response to the buffs and tweaks that they got in the last patch. Uh, and partially maybe because people are looking for fun alt characters to play just as much as their main uh, in their core six roster for gold gain. Um, now Artillerist did get changes in the last patch where, uh, you know, Barrage mode is a lot more usable. Focus Fire got its range doubled. Uh, it also finishes faster. You can roll out of the barrage mode, which before you can get stuck in a mechanic and die without being able to roll. Uh, and they just got a, a buff as well. And they got some of their um, stagger moved around to be a lot more clean and easy to use. So I think, you know, just quality of life, you know, design cleanups makes the Arcturus more interesting. Or maybe there's people that really wanted to play barrage artillerist, barrage enhancement. But without the changes they just had, it was a little too clunky. And now they're they're kind of wanting to play their Artillerist characters more. Uh, but it's cool to see Artillerist climbing up a bit this month uh, in the last 30 days, going up two spots. Um, it's, I think, a little bit in part to the striker going down so much. But it is cool to see Artillerist coming off the bottom of the list and starting to reach the middle. Next up is the War Dancer. We saw the War Dancer start to climb a little bit since launch. Uh, it is not, you know, it's in the same spot that it was in last month but still came off the bottom in, in initial launch in the first month or two of launch we saw war dancer towards the bottom very unpopular not wanting to be played um and same with scrapper too but it seems like as people get more comfortable with the game they learn the mechanics and they they understand the boss fights better people are more willing to, to play these up close martial artists so war dancer kind of still near the bottom middle of the list um, and right after that, we have Scrapper coming up uh, one slot ag again. I mean, again, you know, in the first, maybe actually for the first three months of the launch, uh, we saw Scrapper at the at dead last. It was the least popular class in the game. Uh, it was being picked the least. People didn't want to play it. Uh, and, and ever since then, like every month, it seems to be climbing another spot or another two spots. It's slowly creeping its way up. And again, in the last patch with Destroyer, we saw a huge Scrapper buff, uh, less reliance on self buffs to deal damage, and just overall uh, just becoming more powerful. So I think as, again, as people are getting more comfortable with the game, they're they're building up Scrapper. So Scrapper still on the rise, has come up uh, six spots from the very last spot in the game, uh, and people are really liking her, I guess. The next class is Striker, and this one, I'm not sure what happened. Um, Striker has gone down three spots since the last time. Uh, this one was pretty popular in specifically the US, like North America. It was a very popular class choice, but decently popular in, in most regions, uh, Europe, Europe Central, even South America uh, really liked Striker. But over time, for some reason, Striker is just slipping down the list. And again, let me know what you guys think, why this might be. Uh, Striker, Gunslinger, Shadow Hunter, just slipping further and further down. I'm not sure why people are losing interest in this class or maybe they they're maining it and they're just not they're, they're just kind of parking it and not wanting to push it in eye level. Um, you know, even with the introduction of relic accessories, you would think that uh, some of these classes would see increased activity as people move their reins up. But I guess people just aren't choosing to push their striker higher and higher. Uh, they're just kind of not actively playing their strikers anymore uh, or less so than before. So I'm not really sure why that is. If you have any theories or thoughts on this, uh, please let me know. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, they just want different play styles or maybe the striker windups are a little too slow. Uh, who knows? Uh, the one that follows after that is the sharpshooter. The next three ex excluding destroyer have been at the bottom of the list basically the whole time. Uh, sharpshooter, Soulfist, and Deadeye are the final three. Um, these have kind of been the final three. I mean, they were they, they were just above Wardancer and Scrapper on launch. But now with War Dancer and Scrapper climbing in popularity, uh, obviously that kind of keeps Sharpshooter, Soulfist, and Deadeye closer to the bottom. But the one thing you'll notice here is that um, I, I, I guess we're seeing a, a small bump here. 
Uh, Soulfist did get a little bit of a cleanup. Um, it wasn't quite the, the, the changes that people were expecting, especially in Korea. Um, but it did make it so the Soulfist self buffing that doesn't stack and has weird timings, uh, they cleaned it up a good a bit. So don't rely on your self buffs as much, which also opens up the builds. People are trying out the Kamehameha build. They're trying out the, uh, the AOE circle channel that does decent damage with good tripods, the hard hitter. So people are, are I guess, trying their soul fist more or being willing to push their soul fist higher ever since the change. So, uh, it, it used to be soul fist at the bottom and then dead eye right above. And they've swapped places since last month, uh, partially, I think because of the soul fist changes. And then at the very bottom, we have dead eye. Um, this one, I think we saw coming. I think dead eye has been historically the least popular class in almost every region. Um, I, maybe people just don't like the requirement of being point blank range. Uh, generally dead eyes will run uh, back attack. They'll run the back attack Legion commander relic set, uh, which gives you bonus to back attack. And then they'll run ambush master or master of ambush to get back attack. And they also get a bonus to being like point blank range uh, with a shotgun. So if you're running enhanced weapon uh, dead eye, you're very squishy. You're squishy as a range character, but you have to be right up nuts to butts on the monster to deal maximum damage. Um, and, and they don't have as much mobility as some of the other characters. So I think people just kind of shy away from that. Um, they'd rather play the gunslinger that can focus on more ranged attacks and still do really respectable damage. Um, but Deadeye just has been dead last for a long time, and it probably is going to be that way for a while. And the newest addition to the game, the Destroyer. Now, a few things to think about here. Uh, one, I don't think anyone thought the Destroyer was going to be one of the most popular classes in the game. Uh, it takes a lot of practice to play a Destroyer well. It's, it's relatively slow compared to other classes, has a lot of wind up, even with Supercharge and some Swiftness. Um, and it definitely, uh, you know, has struggled with that. But remember that these measurements are done as activity in tier three. And with Destroyer, we didn't get a, a free power pass. So if there's anyone that didn't save their Express Pass for Destroyer, they didn't save their Phaeton Power Pass for Destroyer, and it's going to take a while for people that do want to play a Destroyer or are planning to, uh, to get into tier three and start showing activity. Uh, they're still, you know, surprisingly enough, Destroyer, even despite those limitations, having just come out without a power pass, uh, still ended up ranking higher popularity than Soulfist and Deadeye, uh, but still down there at the bottom. So I guess we'll kind of keep an eye on Destroyer as we move forward and people get more time to level theirs up. In other regions, Destroyer isn't super popular either, and I didn't expect it to be super popular in the West anyways, but it is kind of, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and see how it changes over time. Now, of course, if your main is towards the bottom or towards the top, don't worry. I mean, popularity is just its own singular metric, something to think about that can be interesting. But if you enjoy a class, always play that class. It doesn't mean that this is how strong the classes are. It doesn't mean that this, these are the classes they're going to get picked. It just means that these are the ones that are being played the most. So they kind of have more mass appeal or they have some kind of specific stick that makes people want to play them. I'm happy to see the, the support classes, Paladin and Bard, jumping up in popularity with the release of Vaulton. People starting to recognize how much supports are needed. And, you know, if they aren't maining the support, they're at least putting it into their, uh, you know, to their active character played base, which is super cool. But let me know your thoughts down below. Is there anything that surprised you about uh, June's popularity changes? Uh, is there anything you'd like to see in the future? I was thinking about maybe doing um, either a separate video or, you know, a separate section in this video for the popularity of the classes we have in other regions, maybe specifically Korea, where it matters most. Uh, but, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.